The Firearms Radio Network provides the bandwidth for this edition of the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Podcast. Welcome to the Firearms Insider Gun and Gear Review Podcast, episode 419. This show is brought to you by Primary Arms and VZ Grips. I'm your host, Chad Wallace, and in this show we'll be discussing Nomads, Hellcats, Wraiths, new camo, vices, and tactical lever gun stocks. We showcase gun reviews, gear, and anything else you as a gun enthusiast may be looking for. We strive to evaluate products from an unbiased and honest perspective. Tonight, I have with me Tony and Rob. Zane, I guess, is still dead. Uh, He's probably stinking up Florida or something like that. Body's rotting away. Probably lost his head or something. He probably ran up with an alligator. <laughs> something like that. So, Primary Arms is our first sponsor of the night. They seek to provide the best shopping experience for everything firearms. With over 13,000 products from your favorite brands, Primary Arms carries a complete selection of rifles, handguns, firearm parts, and shooting gear. Every order comes with a commitment to superior service, fast shipping, and an expert support team. Our primary arms project of the week this week is their new Expo Arms 11.5 inch upper receiver with the chemo brake on it. Basically, they have a whole line of new Expo Arms uppers, uh, which are sold primarily at Primary Arms. Uh, this is a, their patrol series, so it's, you know, got a chrome-lined barrel, uh, various things like that, uh, combat series barrel, which I don't know what the profile is. Uh, it's carbine gas system. It is a 1 in 7 twist. Uh, it's running 10.5 inch Expo Arms M-Lock handguard. And like I said, it's got that uh, chemo muzzle brake on it. So... You can go check that out at Primary Arms by going to frn.deals slash PA. And if you're buying something besides an upper, like an optic, you can use the code FRN and get a free mount with that optic. So I don't know what you guys did in firearms, but you're probably going to tell me it's nothing. Uh, <laughs> weren't a whole lot for me. I, uh, been working around the house trying to get that squared away, but no. Uh, I, I actually think Tony's big thing is tomorrow. So, my big thing is tomorrow, and then coming up on the twenty seventh of uh, April. Also, I have a diversity shoot coming, and I've been running around as we were talking about before the show, trying to purchase a vehicle, and I did it. So we have a new Freedom Wagon and two A four E. So. It will, be, it will be day but it at tomorrow's event. So the public will finally see the new Freedom Wagon. Sweet. Uh, I actually made it to the range quickly. Uh, I got, like I said, last week, I got those Angry Bear Arm sights in that they graciously sent uh, for the SIG 320, the tall profile. So I mounted them on that Grey Ghost Precision slide. And I had to make sure that they were sighted in, so I took them to the range and basically sighted them in. They were pretty close when I put them on originally, but I did have to knock the sight over a tiny bit. That's really all I did at the range, so it's almost the equivalent of nothing. Uh, Almost. So, our bandwidth sponsor for tonight is our friends over at Patriot Patchco. You know, you can always join their patch of the month and you can get these cool patches all the time. Like like this, you know, Mandalorian Easter Bunny thing or anything else they have over there. Uh, they do have lots of cool stuff. You definitely need to go check them out. Uh, cleaning mats, signs, you name it. They probably have it or make it. I saw that when this releases on Friday, they're coming out with some other new patches I don't know. I can't remember what they are, but they're like hero patches or I don't know, 80s patches or something. (laughs) I didn't pay attention, but it's something cool. So you need to go check it out. Uh, We have a bunch of affiliates in the show notes and probably on the YouTube video too. If you want to go check those out, we would appreciate it. Uh, We appreciate 
you guys using those, the people who have. And if you haven't and are going to buy something from one of them, please use them. Rob? The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual co-hosts and do not reflect the official policy or position of the Firearms Radio Network and or their employers. This is not legal advice, nor should it be considered as such. Viewer discretion is advised. This is especially true on live shows. Chad, you just got to—you just about got to be out of them kilt in the streets patches, right? Or do you still got a bunch uh, left? I got a few left. Uh, I haven't okay. really—I haven't really been pushing them because there's not like a ton left. But there are a few, so if you want one, you can still, still, you know, send us some money and we'll send you one out. I, I've been pushing them because we only have a few left. <laughs> it's like. Push him, push him, push him so we can stop talking about him. <laughs> All right, listen, go to Black Swan Media and pick up the two A4E patches. I don't even know if we have any left. Just go look. It's $10. We almost out. I'm pushing the heck out of them. Get some. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And now, Chad, let's talk about this RMT Nomad trigger. We will do that. Uh, you know, as as most of us on here know that – the trigger market is pretty for ARs is flooded, you know, with good AR triggers, you know, okay. Tony's got his patch on his, you know, beard or something. He's distracted. Oh, he got, he's putting his beard to good use. I mean, he should put the kilt in the street one on there too. So he can push that one too. Now he's looking for it. Okay. Back to the nomad trigger. So to stand out in the AR trigger market, you need to think outside the box. And RMT Triggers has done that with their Nomad Trigger. Uh, the Nomad Trigger actually has a pivoting and rotating trigger shoe. Yes, the trigger actually pivots to fit your finger placement on the shoe. I mean, you can't really see it in the video. I'm trying to... You can move it back and forth a little bit. You know... You got a couple good pictures of it on your review. I, I do, and I tried to, tried to put them in there on purpose because especially the ones that are a little bit blurry, but it shows how far the trigger actually moves left and right. So the first noticeable difference you notice about the no Nomad is its movable trigger shoe. Uh, the trigger shoe is free floating, so to speak. It pivots and rotates up to six degrees off of center. This will place the trigger shoe exactly where it needs to be on your finger. If your finger is a little short or long, it rotates to give your finger pad a perfect contact point on the trigger face. Maybe you don't have a perfect grip on the rifle. The Nomad will also pivot for better finger pad contact. Now, the Nomad uses a flat face trigger. This works well with the pivoting system. Uh, I typically don't prefer flat face triggers, but the Nomad is really nice. It's called a flat trigger, but in reality, it has an ever so slight curve to it. Uh, the very slight curve might be why I like it more than other flat face triggers or because of the way it moves. Uh, there are some pictures, like Rob said, in the review on the firearmsinsider.tv, so you can actually see there is a picture that shows that ever so slight curve in it. So when I and actually other people first felt the Nomad trigger, we thought it was a little odd. This was because of the noticeable left and right movement. This completely went away when we actually used the nomad to shoot with you know when shooting the rifle with a nomad trigger in it you don't even notice that the trigger pivots or rotates to fit you the nomad just does what it does it adjusts to you and how you shoot and then you're there uh the trigger is also very fast to use uh it is one of the fastest triggers i own with a couple others now that we've gone over the exotic parts of the nomad it's still a drop-in trigger. So typical cartridge-style AR trigger makes installation super easy. Just remove the old trigger, pull the grip off, slide the out to safety, then drop the Nomad in. Uh, it comes with a set of anti-rotation pins, which are needed for the installation and are something I would recommend for cartridge-style triggers anyway. Uh, so the pins being included is a bonus in my eyes. Now, besides the free adjusting trigger shoe system, the Nomad is a good feeling trigger. As mentioned before, I like the shape of the shoe. The pull has a tiny bit of pre-travel, followed by a fairly short break with little to no over-travel. 
Uh, total trigger, trigger travel is about 125 thousandths of an inch measured at the bottom of the trigger shoe, and it's a pretty long trigger shoe, so that's it doesn't really move that much. Uh, my only complaint with the Nomad is it has a gritty pull. When you pull the trigger slowly, you can feel the grittiness in it. It hasn't gone away either, even with over a thousand trigger presses, thanks to the Mantis Blackbeard system, uh, which I was hoping maybe it would, but it didn't. Uh, but like I mentioned earlier, the Nomad's still a very fast trigger to shoot. Uh, when you pull the trigger at anything other than a slow pace, so medium or quickly, you don't gr notice the grittiness in it. Uh, it just breaks pretty clean, and so you don't notice it. Uh, part of the reason the trigger is a fast trigger to me is it does have a great reset, uh, and it is a three-pound trigger pull weight. Uh, so, like I said, you can mention I can shoot the Nomad on par with my other fast triggers uh, on a shot timer. They're pretty much identical. So, and when other triggers I know are slower, so it's up there in speed if that's what you're interested in. Uh, and you don't notice the pivoting shoe when you shoot fast or slow. Uh, now, the Nomad I received consistently has a pull weight of three point. Three pounds, two ounces on my trigger scale. So it's right in that three pounds where they say it is. Like I said, I put a bunch of time on the RMT Nomad trigger. Uh, I've had other people try it out. In the end, everyone who shot it actually seemed to like it. Uh, I think RMT has a really good idea going with the Nomad trigger. It may seem a little expensive, but you're getting a quality trigger plus something that you that can help you pull that trigger wherever your finger decides it, it wants to be placed on it. At first, the RMT Nomad may seem odd, but give it a chance, you will see what it is all about. So, Firearms Insider Review 8 Key Points. Of course, the claim to fame, it is an AR pivoting shoe trigger. Target markets, pretty much anybody wanting a good trigger that helps to adjust to their finger or hand placement. Finger features and benefits, we've pretty much gone through them, but six degrees of rotation and pivot, the short reset, the three-pound pull weight, the cartridge style, and it includes anti-rotation pins. Uh, other options available, uh, according to their website, they're going to be releasing a non-pivoting trigger, so it'll just be a cartridge style drop-in trigger. There's some links to other reviews and what others are saying in there. Uh, the price point, it's MSRP is $299 on it. Uh, retail, it's like $279, $280, bucks basically. You can find it at RMT Triggers or Optics Planet. Uh, our rating, pros. The trigger adjusts to the user. It does have a short three-pound pull. It is extremely fast. It does have a, that great reset, and it is a drop-in style. The cons is it was gritty when pulling slow and it's a little pricey and i the price so much didn't ding them as much because nobody else makes one of these so it's kind of it was the grittiness so i gave it a score of eight which is great and pretty much that grittiness is about what knocked it down the most everything else i liked about it you guys got any questions on it or should we move on uh, real quick, the anti-rotation screws that are on your air that you used to test it, did those come with the uh, trigger? Or yes, you have yes, they okay. did. They're just, they're just the, let me see if I can pull this up. Standard anti-rotation screws. Right? Yeah, they're just the pins with the little screws on each end. So okay. they... And then it looks like the, tri the, the face of the trigger rotates, but it also pivots. Yes. Or it'll, swings, right? Yeah, it'll swing. And then it'll it'll actually rotate. So is that just a free setup where every time you grab it, it'll just adjust to however yep. you grab it, or yep. you lock, set it, and forget no, it? No, so. you you can't set it. It's just free floating, like you like you okay. see. Which that's why I say it seems kind of weird at first, but then you actually use it, and you don't notice it when you're using it. It's just when you're sitting here, you're like. Oh, this seems kind of weird, and you're like pulling the trigger, and but yeah, when you're shooting it, you don't notice it. 
Because that's what I was thinking about, too. I'm like, hmm, how would that be? Okay. Well, and, and and that's the thing is that I wanted to stress that in the in the review because it's it's one of those things. It's like everybody I handed it to, they're like, this is kind of odd or kind of weird. But then they'd mm-hmm. use it and they'll be like, oh, I kind of like that. So well, okay. the the key for me be just to hand them the rifle without telling them what the trigger does and see how it works. Right. Uh, or see if they like it. You know. Yeah. Giving them a chance to go ill or you know. Right, right, right. I got gotcha. you. Uh, I did not test accuracy with it before or after. I guess there there are some reviews on the internet on it with people saying it gives you better accuracy because you're pulling the trigger more how your hand wants to. But I, yeah, was, I, yeah I don't know if that if I could tell it does that does not difference. have an adjustable pull weight, right? Correct. It's fixed. And what is it about six? You said three pound. Yeah, this one's three pound two ounces, but. They say three pounds. So that's decently light. Yeah, and then and like for an AR, it's like you know I have I have a two pound AR trigger, and you know some of the, I have a couple three pound AR triggers, and I I like the three pound AR triggers better actually so than the two pound. Too light, it's a problem. Yeah, because you, you have to find it. Right. Yep. Okay, so that was the RMT Nomad trigger review, and now Can we just skip the next item. No, because we because we have to talk about VZ grips. So you know that's what we got to do, and VZ grips has been manufacturing handguard grips since two thousand and three, with a reputation for quality, consistency, and innovation. Top tier manufacturers choose VZ grips. They come in a variety of styles, patterns, colors, and are manufactured from proprietary G10, micarta, or carbon fiber. Available with varying degrees of texture, VZ offers a wide range of grips for all different firearms types. Made in the USA, VZ grips offer you more than just handgun grips. Our actual featured grip of the week this week is the Fallout 1911 grips, because if you know anything about VZ grips, they make a lot of 1911 grips. But they also make a lot of these grips for other things, too. It's just they're easier to feature on the 1911s. And so this is kind of a Fallout video game type looking texture. It it looks legitimate. They gave it their aggressiveness of four out of five stars. Uh, You can, of course, get it in different colors, ambi safeties, you know, all the usual from VZ. So... If you want to, you should check out VZ Grips at vzgrips.com. And if you're purchasing something, especially handgun and rifle grips, you will get 15% off if you use the code GGR15. So, Rob, we're into the product spotlight and discussion. And even though this has been out for a little bit, we haven't talked about it. So... While Tony's over can we, there, can we maintain our uh, record and not talk about it? No, Tony's cleaning the gun, so I figure this is the perfect time to talk about the Springfield Hellcat Pro. Uh, MSRP on this is six hundred and thirty-four bucks, and essentially, <clears throat> it's the Hellcat Pro. Uh, like we know, they brought out the Hellcat a while back. This particular one is slightly larger. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it holds 15 plus one capacity. It is optics ready. You know, there's a few things. Of course, it's got an accessory rail. It's 3.7 inch barrel. Uh, It's got front and top slide serrations. Reversible mag release. uh, Melanite finish. Tritium U-dot sights on it, which look appear to be somewhat larger taller enough to fit their red dot at least uh, aggressive grip texture you know all the usual stuff uh it's nine millimeter if i totally forgot that uh, it weighs 21 ounces it is 6.6 inches long 4.8 inches high i think we covered about everything else striker fired you know, so this, if I'm correct, this is like Glock 19, Smith & Wesson, you know, 
compact size. I, you know, I don't really have much more to say about it, but it seems like the Hellcat's been a decent gun for Springfield. I mean, I think every, anybody that listens know how we feel about Springfield, but, you know, there it is, the pro version. Well, they did something right. They put it ready for an optic. Yes, they did do Other that right. That, I mean, two magazines, come on. I think the standard now is three, mm-hmm. or it should be three. I mean, that's what, you know, Glock ships with. That's what FN ships with. I mean. Should be three, yeah. but everybody ships with two now, it seems like, so. Yeah, must be that must be that issue they're having with uh, the supply the supply chain. chain. Yeah, that's that's what they're using. That's what they're saying. You know, of course, maybe but, maybe if they had their magazines made in the U.S., it might be a little easier. But then, of course, they'd cost the same as the ones cost made overseas. <laughs> they'd still be fifty bucks a piece. <laughs> Tony, what do you got on this? Glock makes a nice pistol. <laughs> um, no, Springfield. Hey, <clears throat> it's selling. A lot of people like it. Again, my whole thing with Springfield is more political, and then some of their stuff kind of sucks. But uh, let's see how this Hellcat works out. It's working out. People like it. I shot at the Shot Show 2020. Um, wasn't overly impressed by it uh, because I really don't repeat everything that most of the industry says, I mean, that's one of the cool things about this show. We just say what we say and it is what it is. Um, I didn't like the recoil impulse, right? That's what I said. Cause we were there together. We were at the show. Yeah. I, th- I think if I remember correctly that, but this one's larger, so it might be a little better. Cause yeah, it might be a little better. It's not the, take up your hand. Yeah. Is it? But I, I remember you saying that something about that. So, this one, I, yeah, would, so. I would guess it would be a little better because, like I said, it is a larger handgun than the original Hellcat. So cool. Yeah. Again, I, I, I have political issues with them and some of their products I don't like, but Hellcat seems to be selling well. Um, they did what freaking Taurus does with their Toro. Uh, they'll put out, they'll put out a, a model and then just wait and come out with the optics ready model instead of putting out what people want in the first place. I don't like that, but it is what it is. So yeah, cool. Springfield. Yay. Springfield. Yeah. Yeah. I gotcha. Okay. Well, we can move on to something that I at least think is cool. I don't have a, anything that it'll fit on, but it's the Ranger point Henry stock. I think they make them for Marlins too. MSRP is 275 bucks for this thing. Uh, this is your tactical aluminum adjustable buttstock for Henry, Henry rifles. It's pretty cool. It, it fits basically a lot of the Henry models. You'll ha- you'd have to go look. Uh, it's made from sixty sixty one aluminum. The whole thing weighs twenty two ounces. You know the comb and length of puller adjustable with an Allen wrench and spacers. It does have a recoil pad on it. Uh, let's see. You can get add-ons to it. You can get an accessory rail, M-lock, and flush cups, it says, or a half-inch metal spacer for length of pole, and accessory panel, M-lock, flush cups combo, basically. So if you want it longer, basically, if you have one of the like M-lock forearms on your Henry or want something to that effect and want a full tactical version, Plus, it's adjustable, so if you're running like an optic on it, like a red dot or something, you can get your cheek a little higher. The M-Lock panel that goes on it, you can you can mount extra ammo in or pretty much anything else you want to put on it. But in most of the pictures, it's basically got ammo in it. So that's, that's that. It's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what Rob and Tony think about it, but that's my thoughts. Oh, I like it. I mean, if you want to Gucci out your uh, Henry Lever Action Rifle, I mean, that's a good way to start with it. Okay, if you wonder why I don't respect the firearms industry, is because you, many of you people, jump on something because somebody told you it's cool. Instead of you just checking it out yourself, you wait around for somebody else to tell you whether it's cool or not. And then you either you know, embrace it or dismiss it, depends on who tells you. So now all of a sudden they're having tactical lever action classes and people are all gooning all over everything. Oh my God, it's so cool. Oh my goodness. Now again, 
not making fun of Chris Costa because I think he ran a he can run a pretty decent class. I've taken his class. Everybody in the industry went down and took this lever action class because they got given lever actions by Henry with all the latest bells and whistles and exhale. Now all of a sudden people like it. Now all of a sudden companies like Ranger Point is cool. Well, nine years ago when Mossberg came out with 464 SPX, I think we were the only ones saying it was cool with an adjustable with pick rail. Oh, but it was ugly then, but we like it now. Shut up. I mean, the, I, up. I'm still going with their ugly, but yeah, I but also, they're still cool. but they're useful. They're, they, I mean, yep. really, if you look at just an standard old lever action rifles, they always put a, fa- I mean, a lot of times people would put the fabric, you know, buttstock mag carrier or cartridge yep. carrier on it because that you kind of but now all of a sudden it's tactical all those little tactical timmies that couldn't wait to get their <laughs> uh, bravo company rifles and poop all over anything that wasn't an ar-15 now all of a sudden are liking lever actions lever actions never stop being cool lever no. actions are on point you carry all your ammo on it that you need for most situations and uh i think it's really cool that it's coming into vogue again I don't think they should have ever left, and uh, I, I'm glad that uh, uh, that this company is making something again, American made. I think it's family owned, and I, I think that's awesome. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, I I do like a good lever gun, even though I don't really have any. Really, I've had a lever gun for I don't a decade. I, I should I say. It. I should say I have a lever gun, but it's not your standard lever gun because it's a Savage 99. It's kind of no, it's oh, Savage. 99, so it's, you know, rotary box mag weird thing. Uh, uh, Henry donated them to the 2A4E, and I, I love the fact that I got them. I introduced kids to them. I introduced adults to them. Yep. Um, because it's a piece of nostalgia. Uh, the companies that make them here, I mean, Marlin makes them. Mossberg makes them. Do Mossberg still make them? I don't. Uh, under sure. the, I, I don't know. I don't think they do. I think. I don't remember seeing them, or maybe they just have like one picture on there. I don't. I don't remember seeing them. But yeah, I don't think so. Well-made lever actions are still just as effective against man and beast as they were back in the day, if you put the time in to run them. And they're fast. For yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So and they come in a lot of different calibers. Oh, lots, lots in yeah, exactly. Even like you said, the the Browning and stuff with magazine fed ones, you can get, you know, any of your six five Creedmoor, anything that run in odd caliber, so to speak, for a lever Three, gun. Three eight six five Creedmoor. Yep. Five five six. Yeah, you need running lever guns now. Yep. So that was the Ranger Point Henry stock. Next up, we have something from Real Avid. It's the Master Gun Vice. Uh, this thing looks like a beast. Uh, MSRP on this thing is 300 bucks. Uh, I will say, by looking at it, it, like I said, it looks like a beast, but it's pretty cool. Uh, it does a bunch of stuff. It's got some steel jaw plates in it, if that's what you want, or it's got some reversible sleeves you can put in there that look more like I think they're plastic or something, so you can clamp onto stuff without scratching it. Uh, It has a bunch of, they call them pins, locking pins for gun fit sleeves and lug lock upper vice blocks. So you can get those for various different firearms to lock them in place, and then you can basically rotate this thing pivot this thing any direction you want to get the rifle or handgun or whatever you're working on in the situation that works best for you uh it uses a ball and socket locking lever down at the bottom that's pretty beefy you know so it's got a little crank on it so you can you know to clamp stuff down it says a quick adjust crank which means it's got a coarse thread on it Real Avid makes good stuff. Uh, this one bolts down to whatever you have it mounted to. If you do a lot of, like, gun stuff, this might be pretty useful for you. Uh, I mean, it probably works way better than just my standard vice. 
but uh, yeah, go ahead. no, I was going to say it looks cool and they make good stuff. So I wouldn't worry about it not working. Um, I'm really going to have to set up something when I get uh, my place. I have to have a workshop set up so I can work on firearms that's dedicated. And I think real AV makes really good combo tools and tools. Some of this, a lot of this stuff is really well thought out. Plus, I mean, being up front, they donated stuff to the diversity shoot. So I, I'll go to people that helped us first when I go to set up my thing. One, ask for stuff for free. But two, at least spend my money with them first. Because they have helped out grassroots Second Amendment advocacy. And to me, that's important. As many people put on having products made in America, I put that uh, kind of emphasis on people that have actually helped in the fight for the Second Amendment. And really, if it has. So uh, if, if that's one of the things you that determine who you buy from, be aware that they actually do work with us. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds yeah, good. Not only that, but I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I've tried to mount a scope in a lead sled and have the rifle just kind of twist or cant off to the side. And you're like, oh crap. You know, then you got to re recenter or re-zero the rifle or re-level the rifle to get it squared away. This would definitely hold the rifle while you're trying to mount the scope to it, you know? Yep. Yeah, I do. Not only that, but like if you want to lower, you want to hold it upper, you could use this to hold the hold the darn thing while you're trying to build it out you know yeah exactly and because you could clamp your little fixture in it to, for your ars <laughs> Tony. <laughs> so that was What's next? that was the real avid master gun vice <laughs> up next the non-typical stuff we show we, we showcase on this show combat flip-flops they're BD-22 high tops. MSRP on these is 69 69 mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. And mm. the pattern. What color is that? It looks unique. It's a camouflage color that they call. What do they call it, Tony? <laughs> he cuts out. It's teasing. Uh -oh. They call it cockerflies. That's right. It's my favorite camouflage fatty cockerflies. It's teasing and that love the cockerflies fanny. Mm -mm. Looks like a tasty shoot. What? So, <laughs> teasing yeah. just cut out or? Yeah, I don't uh, know what happened. Okay. I, I, I mean, it was kind of weird. He just came in all of a sudden and then just left. I mean, I, I don't uh, understand the internet. I'm black. At least, at least we know he's not <laughs> not dead yet now. No, according to Joe Biden, I don't understand it. I'm a minority. <laughs> okay. Uh, but these are their standard high tops that they've been making. You know, I think Rob and I both have a pair in black or one of the other colors. But I had a pair. Yeah, that's Sorry. right. You know, shoe sizes, they don't make half sizes. They're running canvas upper, you know rubber outsoles which are super like soft and sticky uh which i will say from the pair i have they work fantastic uh, and they go with the pattern they do yeah. uh-huh because as they sticky. say they're sticky af <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and uh i mean you can go back and read read my review of these similar if you Basically, if you type in combat flip-flops on the firearmsinsider.tv, it'll take you there. Uh, it tells some of their backstory. Uh, like, these are made in Bogota, Colombia. And If you go and uh, watch their, their interview on uh, Shark Tank, I think it's pretty cool to hear. But listen to them tell their backstory. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, as far as their flip-flop, their product, I think it's funny. Oh, yeah. But I mean, there's a reason Rob doesn't have his pair anymore, right? And, and and when it comes down to that, look, if I spend money on something, regular shoe money, I want the thing to last a little bit. I don't want problems mm -hmm. with. It. Yeah, and then yeah, said, the the one I had the the eye grommets after about a year they started to rust. So I'm like, okay, trash. Yeah, and my having that said, I've got a pair of their flip flops and. I've been wearing them darn near every day for the last year and a half, two years. And they're great. I love their flip-flops. And I think that's totally fair. I mean, let's understand. Flip-flops, they were made in Columbia too, right? Uh, yeah, I, I think so. They were at the beginning. 
I don't know where they're made now. Yeah. But hey, listen, some some things are a hit, some things are a miss. Everything in a product line isn't going to be awesome. Just ask Springfield Armory. So, um, what? No? No? Call back? <laughs> anyway, um, I think it's funny. I think if you want to get a parent support a company that's doing good work in other countries and giving people jobs and actually being socially conscious, it's awesome. But I like everything. You know how it is. Well, uh, and, and, and the thing is, is if you compare them to other shoes like this, you know, they're probably, they're about the same quality. Uh, these are way cooler pattern. And price wise, you know, if you want to set a, you know, canvas high tops that are like this, you're going to pay probably more or the same. So they're in the same ballpark. Yeah. Um, I don't know if build quality is the same. I've had these Ultimas for, is that how you pronounce it? I, I don't know. I think so, though. That's how I would pronounce it. But like I said, I still have their, I think mine are the MK19s or something. And like I said, Rob's started rusting. Mine, I wore them so much that the eyelets started pulling pulling out. And, you know, I used to wear them every day. So, you know, I guess it kind of depends. And I've worn them for at least, at least a year. So, you know. Oh, cool. Okay. So, I guess... Tzan doesn't want to say anything more about those because they're his. Fa- I guess he didn't cut in. Yeah, I mean they're his favorite pattern. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he wants he wants to get all kind. He wants to get whole outfits in that pattern. Yeah. Including mm-hmm. the face mask. Yeah. You know. Okay. He's really excited about getting the face mask <laughs> in that pattern. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's so, never gonna come back, right? Uh, <laughs> He's never gonna come back, right? I don't know. He, he, he some reason, you know, he's too busy or something. You know, he got that state yeah, job. T- <laughs> yeah, T Zane might make a make a make a uh, a reel about this week. So, oh no, that ought to oh, be no. pretty interesting. Hey, well, you know, you know, if you, <laughs> you decides to make one, so uh, you might have to wait till Friday or Saturday or something next to see that. But so next up is our knife, and because you know. I got tired of putting something in here for us cheapskates. <laughs> it is the Heretic Wraith Auto. MSRP is six hundred and ten bucks. Uh, you know, it's. I Did you say Heretic, bro? Heretic, whatever you want. Yeah, to say. you go. There you go. <laughs> it's a it's, Heretic. It's Heretic. It's like Hereditary, but it's Heretic. Okay. <laughs> because you're you're gonna keel over when you hear this price. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's 610 bucks loud and loud yeah it's pretty nice looking I mean it's yeah. ru- it's running a, it is an auto so you got that going for you it's running a LMAX blade uh, mm-hmm. yeah and some funky black purple camo carbon fiber titanium knife stuff purple it's it's cool looking i real say will say it's pretty cool blade length is 3.625 inches uh it's just a hair over five inches closed and 8.7 inches open uh blade thickness 0.178 inches it is a clip point style flat ground it has black dlc coating on the blade the handle is here's the integral purple Camo carbon with black DLC titanium bolster. Uh, it's handle thickness is 0.62 inches. It's a button lock. You can run it tip up, right, or carry is what it looks like. Titanium clip. It does only weigh 4.23 ounces. It's a nice looking knife. I don't know about the price, but hey, you know, like I said, I was tired of putting this stuff in here, so I'm going to put these semi custom auto knives in here i do know lmax the lmax steel if it's anything like the one that i have is like does not wear out and is a super pain to sharpen uh it's now what what i read about it is it's not as hard to shop in this sharpen this particular lmax but it how do they say it comes ridiculously sharp um, because it has very small molecular structure because it's made out of powdered 
metals yeah. or something. Yeah, they combined it's, it. It's powdered metal technologies. Yeah, and they put it together already in the blade form and then heat it up in the molds, I guess. Yep. So it's it's I mean, <clears throat> I'll use all of my expertise from Forged in Fire, and it doesn't have any cracks in it or weirdness because flaws and I forgot what the other word they use that you can find inside a knife that you didn't know was there when you put them together and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't have all that. Um, it's a really expensive knife. I And they make a bunch of different types with different blade types, different openings. So, of course, I fell down a rabbit hole as I was watching it. And <laughs> also they make them of different blade steels. So I'm sure they are different prices. Now, what they said about this L, what is it called? L-Tamac? L-Max. L-Max is it's like SV30. Yeah. Kind of, sort of in that ballpark. Because I was trying to find a comparison to some of the knife steel you, we talk about on the right. show. And at least it brings it back into, okay, I know what that is. I've read about that. And I know like uh, um, Spyderco. Have has a lot of knife blades made out of SV30. Yeah, and, and, and ZT used to run a lot of them. Yeah, and that's the that's the one I I have a ZT that has Elbax blade on it, and that thing okay. of all the knives I have, it is the hardest to sharpen. But that's what happens when you start getting into these different blade seals and away from 440C and just just <laughs> well, the stuff that's in the middle right you know what i mean like like in the mid 50s yep mid 40s it's it's i at least for me it's harder to get it to sharpen than the S35 i have but they both sharpen and yeah they make they can get pretty darn sharp <laughs> So and that's yeah. awesome. I mean, a, a sharp knife is a safe knife, suppose. Yeah, Tony, you need to sharpen your knife so you don't cut yeah. yourself. Yeah, no, that sucker cut me real easy. <laughs> that sucker See, cut I, me with that I, cheap, I, I, I that cheap steel. Yeah, that cheap steel. So <laughs> that was the. Let's see. How can I mispronounce this? Her oh, you did a lovely job of miss heretic. <laughs> Heretic? Heretic. Heretic. <laughs> like heretic knives. I'm like, okay. Heretic, okay. whatever. The Wraith <laughs> Otter. Last host couldn't say Molly. Boy, that's like uh, Jake <laughs> or ambidextrous. Amba, mm-hmm. Ambidextrous? Or how's he? Pre- ambidextrous? Ambidex- I don't yes. know. Yeah, so that is the Heretic Wraith Auto. We don't have any listener feedback. Uh, because I guess people want to hear T Zane, or he's never here, or I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm I'm, I'm getting hurt. Like I'm putting all this work in this T Zane impersonation. Oops, I'm sorry. I pulled back the curtain. And, uh... <laughs> oh no, we found out who the man behind the curtain is. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Anyway, yeah. So it is what it is, man. Yeah, <clears throat> he'll be back eventually someday. You know. Mm-hmm. Who knows? But he knows we make fun of him. So Tony, no, this week. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know you're going to tell us about what's happening tomorrow for our live viewers. Hey, live viewers! Um, tomorrow you're going to have a diversity shoot at Gunfire Range in Woodland Park. I can't wait because there's going to be a whole bunch of new people that I haven't met yet. And then on the 27th. We're going to have another diversity shoot 27th of April. That's when, that's in like 14 days from tomorrow. We're going to have another diversity shoot in uh, Monroe, New Jersey. And then we're going to have another diversity shoot in uh, Eastern PA. So we're having these suckers like every two weeks pretty much for the rest of the year. So, yeah, we hustling, we working, we making it happen, we're trying to introduce. As much as they try to push anti-gun stuff this way, we're going to work twice as hard to introduce people to firearms and expose the lies being told. So that's what we're doing. And if you want to help us out, please go to diversityshoot.com, click on our PayPal link, and donate. And help us in this fight because, again, we're doing events every two weeks. Plus, uh, I need funds to fly out to Detroit. Because I'm going to be in on training 4,000 women over the last weekend in June 
in firearm safety and how to use a gun. And I'm also in May on Memorial Day weekend, flying out for some training and also meeting people and how to and learning how to become a better advocate at Train and Learn, Kevin Dixie. So if you guys could help, uh, they'd be greatly appreciated. And I got to figure out this weekend how to get you guys in on some giveaways or raffles. So that can help fund what we're doing. So I appreciate it. As always, thanks. Go to diversityshoot.com, support the work. Check me out at Twitter, second for everyone. Check me out on Facebook and uh, Instagram at Simon Says Train. And also check out the second is for everyone on Facebook. I appreciate it. See you guys next week. Yeah, we'll be here. So you can also send questions, comments, or feedback to us here at gungearreview at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us an iTunes review. We'll probably read it on air, too, unless it's got way too many words for us, which might be a problem with the way I pronounce stuff. Yeah, one <laughs> is way too many words. So check out all I the... I read a tick. So, so yeah. check out all the other great shows you on the fire. Bonus for using her- heretic and... Uh, yep. Ambidextrous. In one, wor- in one sentence. Uh, so check out all the other great shows on the Firearms Radio Network at firearmsradio.net. Don't forget to visit the Firearms Insider at firearmsinsider.tv. You can check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Firearms Insider. Of course, thank you for listening to the largest pound-for-pound podcast on the network. And we are out.